there, folks. Welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could make it because in today's episode, we're making the Nooch Sausage. That's right, a sausage flavored with nutritional yeast. Now, I got to admit, this is not an original idea. A couple years ago, I saw a Reddit post where someone had a similar sausage, but all they posted was photos. They didn't want to share the recipe. Well, we're not going to do that today because you will find a recipe link for this nutritional yeast sausage in the description box below. And I'll tell you what, you are absolutely going to want to make this recipe because we're going to take a very simple spice profile and create a sausage that is absolutely going to knock your socks off. It's going to be amazing. Let's make the Nooch sausage. Let's take a look at the spices, starting with salt. We're going to add pepper. I'm a huge fan of coriander. And so guess what? It's in there. We're also going to be adding some smoked paprika. You'll find a recipe link in the description box below. The star of the show, the nutritional yeast. I added 1%. Nutritional yeast is an interesting ingredient because it not only brings a whole lot of flavor, but it also acts as a very interesting binder. And so our sausage should be juicy with a really beautiful texture. We are going to add minced garlic. And for the liquid... I'm going to be adding 10% beer. If you want to add low sodium chicken stock, if you want to add cream, if you just want to add regular water, all of those work fine. No problems there. Now that we have our liquid and our spice profile all ready to go, we're going to set that to the side and let's take a look at our casing. 2932, that's the name of the game. Nice small casing. These have been rinsed, flushed, and in the refrigerator overnight, there's a little baking soda in that water to keep everything nice and slippery. If you would rather lose the casing and turn this into a patty, that would be fine too. You would have yourself a beautiful Nooch burger. The choice is yours. Let's look at the meat. This is going to be a 100% pork sausage, but if you want to mix and match the proteins, use venison, use beef. That's totally fine. What you are looking for is 70% lean to 30% fat. That's going to produce a beautiful sausage. Our meat and fat have been chilled, so let's go ahead and get this ground up on a six millimeter plate. <laughs> There we go. Absolutely perfect. Very peppily grind. Nice little fat pieces throughout. This is going to produce an extraordinary sausage. Into the mixer it goes, where we take all of our meat, all of our spices, all of our liquid, and combine them into a nice sticky paste. First up, we're going to add our spices. We're going to make sure we give that a nice mix. If you are using your hands to mix the meat, make sure your meat is really cold. Now we're adding our beer, and this is going to help loosen everything up. As this mixes, and this whole entire process in the KitchenAid only took about 90 seconds. It may take a little bit longer if you're mixing by hand, but just remember, keep your meat nice and cold. Everything will be fine. If you grab a handful and it sticks to the underside of your hand when you flip your hand upside down, then you are good to go. And I'm loving this. This is very sticky. We can now get this into our sausage stuffer. We're using a five pound sausage stuffer. And if you've ever wanted to know what piece of sausage making equipment will actually help you make better sausages, you're looking at it right here. A dedicated sausage stuffer will immediately level up your sausage game, guaranteed. All right, let's get the casing onto the horn. And when it comes to soaking that casing, I personally recommend an overnight soak. In my opinion, that's going to help you produce the highest quality sausage with the most beautiful snappy casing. All right, so let's get that on the horn. Tie it off with a simple knot. And if your horn is empty and full of air like mine is, I just like to prick the very end of it to let that air escape. Just like so. Let's get this nooch into its casing. All right, any little bit of meat that's left in the horn, I'm using a sausage stuffing horn cleaner from the sausage maker to help empty that out. And it leaves the horn nice and clean, just like so. It makes cleanup super easy. And now we're going to link our sausage. And here's where you can decide whether you want short, whether you want long, whether you want a coil. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to do, you know, 10, 11 inch links. And all I'm going to do is pinch it with my left hand and twist this three times forward. The following link, we're going to twist three times towards us, and you're going to continue that alternating process until you are done. And this should produce nice, tight, plump links. We are going to set this in our refrigerator overnight. That's going to help dry the casing out. It's going to help allow these flavors to come together. And with a sausage pricker, we're going to prick out any air pockets. That's going to help the casing adhere to the meat a little better. And then tomorrow, we're going to give it a cook. It's now tomorrow, and our ceramic grill is lit up. And when it comes to grilling sausages, I like to add a deflector 
conductor plate to my ceramic grill to help move some of that heat around. I'm also going to add just a little piece of mesquite wood. It's going to give this a nice smoky flavor. I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. And we're just going to set that right on the side of those coals. That's going to be perfect. Let's get the other deflector plate and we are now good to go. This is going to ensure that we don't cook our sausages too hot. If you cook your sausages too hot and too fast, then you're a lot more likely to render out the fat, leaving you a dry, crumbly sausage. We've already got that smoke going. Let's go ahead and close the pit down. And I like to put the top vent down to about 0.5, so somewhere between the zero and the one. And for the bottom vent on the ceramic grill, I'll close all the way. And that shield, I'll close till it leaves me about an inch of space at the end, enough to put my thumb. When it comes to temperature, I like to cook somewhere between 230 and 250 Fahrenheit. So that's absolutely perfect. And that mesquite smoke is already building up on the inside of this ceramic grill. If you want any information on this particular grill that I'm using, check the description box below. Halfway through the cook, I'll give the sausages a flip. It's not technically necessary, but I like to monitor what's going on inside that grill. And it looks like everything is going exactly as it should. Casings are nice and tight. They're developing a beautiful color. And we are now done. We brought this to an internal of 155. And check this out. Very little fat rendered, and that's exactly what you're looking for. Let's slice this up and give it a taste. All right, folks, it's time to try the Nooch sausage. What do you think about that? Nice, smooth slice, very juicy. We've got a firm casing on the outside. I could have probably stuffed it a little bit tighter, but as it stands right now, I think it looks great. It smells wonderful, a little smoky. You're definitely picking up that nutritional yeast. Let's just go ahead and give it a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Cooking it the way that we did it on the grill with a little bit of smoke, absolutely incredible. I think it just enhances the flavor of this particular sausage. Ultra juicy, great texture. And I'm kind of loving the nutritional yeast element. Now, with that being said, I do like nutritional yeast. And so I like that sort of cheesy umami quality that nutritional yeast brings to whatever you put on it. And it is not disappointing in this sausage. I'm kind of digging it. Hmm. This is delicious, absolutely incredible. And I gotta tell you, the only concern that I had with this recipe was that we might overwhelm the flavor with nutritional yeast. I added 1%. It's kind of an experiment. And I am loving the flavor. I think more than 1% would probably be a little too much nutritional yeast. And maybe the next time I make it, I may even come down a little bit just to kind of see the difference. But as it stands right now, this is a delicious sausage and I hope you get a chance to make it. Remember, this is a fresh sausage. A lot of fresh sausages on the show this year. So you don't need curing salts, although you could add curing salts if you wanted to do, let's say a low and slow type of cook or pop it in your smoker or something like that. But the recipe, the way that it's written does not call for curing salt. So you can make it and eat it the same day. You can refrigerate it, you could freeze it. Being that it is a fresh sausage though, it is gonna be more perishable than a cured sausage. So just make sure to eat it within a couple of days of making it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you have any questions about the Nooch sausage, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. Don't forget, today is the final day that you can register to win the Sausage Makers $300 sausage making bundle. It's not too late to enter. I'll put the details of what you need to do in the pinned comment so that you can get registered for the drawing. I believe the drawing is tonight. And be sure to stick around because tomorrow, same time, same place, we're not only making the sausage that you guys have been requesting for at least four years, but the Sausage Maker is also going to be giving away a 25 pound electric sausage stuffer to one lucky winner. All that's happening in tomorrow's episode. You're not going to want to miss it. Thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.